God bless you, my beautiful sisters in Christ. Today, I wanted to share something I've been going through in hopes to bless someone who's watching this because I know that what I'm going through, I'm not going through it alone. And I definitely know for a fact that there are people in the body of Christ that if one person is going through something, there's a high percent chance that someone else is going through either something similar or exactly the same. So with that said, I'm just going to be very honest with you guys and just pour it out and just be transparent because there's no other other way I want to be but honest. Okay? So, <sighs> I've been going through a lot of mental warfare. Um, the enemy tends to use something specific against me quite often, especially when it comes to um, pleasing God. And of course, we love the Lord. Those that are his children love the Lord. We want to please our Father, right? Jesus always was after uh, doing what the Father said. Um, he was always pleasing the Father by what he did every day. He was Everything he did glorified God. And we also want to be that example too. We want to be able to walk that out like Christ did. Right? The thing is, is that there's nothing good in our flesh. We can't please God with our fleshly deeds. We can do all the things in the world, but if it's not coming from a pure heart, we're doing it in vain. If it's not being led by the Spirit of the Lord, we're doing it in vain. And it's more for ourself and not for God. So you can even pursue works in your flesh that glorify self and not God. That glorify man and not God. And that's the truth. And, you know, I've been aware of that and I've been very cautious with what I do and say and even making these videos, I don't even make them often because I really want the Lord to lead me and speak to me to make videos and me not just po post and post and post in vain. You know, if some people have the anointing um, and, the, and the drive and they feel like they're just in a position to do that daily, that's, that's, their, that's their thing with God. But for me, I just want to be led with everything that I do, because I know that everything's gonna be tried by fire eventually. All our works are gonna be tried by fire. And is everything I'm doing for myself or for man's attention, or is it really for God? So that's why, you know, for me personally, I'm very cautious with how I go about things, and I really wait for the Lord to unction me in the spirit to pursue making certain content or even just posting on Facebook. Am I perfect? No. Do I fall short? Absolutely. I make mistakes just like everyone else does. But the only difference is that we repent. When we acknowledge our, our faults, we repent and turn to the Lord. So basically for me, I've been dealing with a lot of mental warfare in regards to not pleasing God enough, not doing enough for God. Oh, that's just a... That's one thing that I can say the enemy likes to push my buttons. It's that area. Not doing enough for God. And a lot of times I'm my worst enemy. It's my own condemnation. Making myself feel as if I need to do more and more and more to earn my father's approval and love, which is the biggest lie. If God loved us even while we were still sinners and died for us, it makes me think that if anything I do, it's going to make him love me any more than he already does. God already loves me. He's loved me with an everlasting love. And that's the thing is believing that, you know, like really believing that God loves you and that he cares for you. And what pl truly pleases God is faith in his son. That's what justifies us. That's what glorifies the Lord is 
just to know that we have faith in his son and the promise through his son Jesus Christ the new covenant like he's our Lord and Savior and when we trust in him I mean <laughs> there's nothing greater to God the Father than hearing that and we trust in his son and believe in him the gospel is simple for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him Jesus Christ shall not perish but have everlasting life that's a promise and the free gift of salvation it's free for us but it costs Christ his own life anyone that chooses Christ will also be called to deny themselves pick up their cross and follow him but thank God that he gives us a heart of flesh and that he gives us a new spirit or I guess you could say he puts his spirit in us and, re and brings to life our dead spirit um, because only the Holy Spirit can do that so yeah I've been dealing with that you know for the past couple months where it's like back and forth chatter about not doing enough and you know making trying to condemn me make me feel like you know I'm not a faithful servant or I'm not a good daughter to my my father in heaven and um I guess it hurts more because I actually feel like I believed the lie for so long I think it hurts because God's also looking down and saying why do you believe that don't you know who you are to me? Don't you know who I say you are? Don't you believe in my truth? Why do you give any room for the enemy to speak into your life when he's only trying to separate you from me? That's what happens when we believe a lie. We actually say we come in agreement with Satan. <laughs> we're saying, yes, yeah, Satan, your words are true. And we're calling God a liar. That's horrible. Oh man, that's intense. <laughs> Lord, forgive us. So at the end of the day, we really need to be mindful of what voices we're taking heed to what are we listening to are we believing the lie or are we believing god's word to be true if we believe that the holy bible is it's it's just 100 percent truth then anything else that comes against the truth that is contrary to the word of god shouldn't even have room to enter shouldn't even be something we entertain but we just immediately cast down because we know it's a lie and sometimes you have to go through this several times until you finally see, you, you first of all have an awareness of the cycle. You see what, what the enemy is doing and how he's using certain things against you. Once you establish that and you understand what he's saying into your life and how he's coming against you, then you can search the scriptures and find verses that can come against the lies. So... Even when the enemy tries to speak this into my life, I know that it is by grace, through faith, that I am saved, not of my works. Right? So we really need to know what the Word of God says, that I am justified by my faith through His Son, Jesus Christ. That Abraham was accounted righteous because of his faith. And that's so important to God. So for me, that's what I stand on. And yeah, sometimes if I'm not grounded or if I'm not really in a place where the armor of the Lord is upon me, maybe I haven't been in his presence as much or I'm struggling to get there, which has also been a thing. You know, at times I, I struggle with even getting into prayer. Um, there's a resistance, an opposition against that. But eventually God gives me the grace to seek him and I keep pushing forward. I keep pressing in because, I mean... 
what are you going to do? Just because there's a barricade there doesn't mean you just can't go there. No, you got to push in and, and, and break through the barricade. You need a, you need a, you know, a sense of violence, take it by force. We need to push through until we get through. Sometimes it's going to take a lot of just travailing and weeping and humbling your soul before God. Crying out to your father through fasting and other things that the Lord calls you to do at that time so that the breakthrough can happen in your life. Remember, the enemy doesn't want you to get closer to God. That's the last thing he wants. He doesn't want you to have a strong relationship with your creator. He doesn't want to make your walk enjoyable. He wants to ruin it. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God comes to give life and life more abundantly. And he wants you to enjoy his time on, on earth. He wants you to enjoy your time on earth with him. He wants to be in constant fellowship with you. He wants to know everything that you're going through. He wants to be one with you. And that's the thing is like, there's so much joy in the Lord and he is our strength and he is our everything. And when you're with him and communing with him and you think of him and meditate on his goodness and all the things that he's done, it just brings you just, it brings you to life. And it really just turns things around quickly. So just even confessing this before you guys is doing something for me personally because I'm able to get this off my chest and um, just kind of lay it all out there for you guys to see. You know, yeah, I, I, I sometimes believe the lie, which I know I shouldn't. I'm aware of that. And that's why God is, you know, calling me forth into victory through the word of God and saying, you know what, daughter, that's a lie. Stop believing lies. Start believing my truth. What do I say about you? What does my word declare? What are my promises? Stand on that. And that's how you're going to build a firm foundation that doesn't easily shake, that doesn't easily crack. You know, you want to be able to stand on what God says about your situation, about you. Because when you do that, no matter what fiery darts come against you, God quenches them all because you stand on faith, right? The word of God says that the shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts of the enemy and it's faith. So I just encourage you guys today, if you have been bombarded with mental attacks, things, lies of the devil that has been speaking into your life, even your flesh that's trying to lead you astray and lead you deeper into glorifying self instead of glorifying God. I just pray that the Lord will turn everything around for you by reading his word, by standing on the truth of what God says instead of believing what the enemy says. We already went through that in the very beginning of creation. Eve decided to believe Satan over God and look where it led us. But now God's saying, don't, don't fall for the same mistake. <laughs> don't fall for the same trap believe what my word says renew your mind daily in the word get into the scriptures because in them you're going to find so much life you're going to find so much truth and it's going to literally be the armor against the, the attacks of the enemy because some days are rough <laughs> some days it's, it may be harder than others but that doesn't mean that victory is not available to everyone that seeks the Lord because remember Christ already overcame the world and we are overcomers in him right so if we trust in the Lord to deliver us he is faithful to do so so I don't I want you to guys to really consider this to trust in the Lord with all your heart with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I love you guys so much. There's one thing I'm learning is that God is good. And that's something I've learned from the beginning of my walk because he literally saved me. Um, but just really understanding how good your father is and how much he loves you and cares for you. And how much he's, he's present in the struggles. A lot of times it feels like he's not there, but he really is there. 
it just may not look like that because there's so much going around, uh, you know, so much stuff happening around you that you're too focused on the problem instead of the one who can solve it. And I think that once we start transitioning our perspectives and start focusing on God, keep your eyes single upon the Lord, things will start to shift. And once, you're, once your eye is fixated on Christ, no matter what happens, you're always going to have a light to see and you're always going to have a solution. Like, I believe that when we keep our mind on Christ, no matter what we're going through, he's going to be able to get us through anything. It doesn't matter how big the storm is. It doesn't matter how crazy things are going to get. Like, it doesn't matter. There's nothing too great for God. And if we are focused on him and we really, you know, trust in him entirely with everything that we got we won't be disappointed i believe that god is good and, I, and that's one truth i really do reflect on and stand on because i've seen it multiple times and it's not even what i've witnessed it's just to know that he is good that is the truth god is good all the time <laughs> there's no changing his character so I just pray that, you know, whatever you're going through, just know that. And that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He says he will be with you until the end of age. And that's a, that is a promise. He's not going to leave you an orphan. Everyone else can forsake you and leave your side. But God won't do that to you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Don't believe the lies. Believe the truth. And stand on that. I love you guys so much. And Heavenly Father, I just bless everyone that's watching this right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that whatever the lies of the enemy have been speaking into their into their minds, into their life, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you will come against those lies and destroy it with the word, with your word in your holy Bible, God. That you will really come forth, God, and destroy every single seed that has been planted into your children's mind by fire, O oh God that you will devour it and destroy it at the root, that it shall not produce any fruit. Oh God, I thank you right now for sowing seeds through your word, that they will read your word and they will find all the truth that they need. Lord, I pray that you will guide them closer to you in your Holy Spirit and help them, Lord God, to overcome every lie of the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.